He said also 50 injured. Yeah. Okay, so let me just uh, introduce this. First of all, this is like the kind of stuff that I don't really like to do, but sometimes we have to do it, especially when you have um, something so big that happens in America. And what I'm talking about is the mass shooting event that just went down overnight in Orlando. At this point, we have 50 people dead and 50 people on average in the hospital right now that we're hoping since they're getting medical care they're going to be able to pull through it and the numbers don't uh, start going up but at this point the news media is basically calling it the worst mass shooting in American history I'm watching it as it goes on live right now I, I think um, I've got mixed flip here and um, I've also got Joe from 13 C gun reviews I think you're also watching this live right mixed flip yeah, I got the news on right now. Right. So, um, you know, one of the things one of the things I always say to people is, you know, see this passum parabellum, and and a lot of people don't know what that means. They're like, you know, what is that? How come you say that all the time? Basically, it's if you seek peace, prepare for war. And I think that, unfortunately, this is something that is going to bring that that issue up again because. We, I think most of us gun guys want peace. We want to live peaceful, happy lives. We have families, and we just want to enjoy our families, enjoy our lives and the things that we, we care about. However, in America, most of us, our way of life is under fire. It's under attack. And if we want peace, we have to prepare for this war that's coming to our doorsteps, whether we like it or not. I, I don't know what you guys think about that. Oh, absolutely. Um, you, you're going to see this kind of behavior ramp up. We've already seen this kind of behavior ramping up over the last 10 years. And, yeah, if you're not prepared, you're just going to be a victim, obviously, like these guys here. Yeah, uh, Joe, do you have anything that you want to add before? Uh, I mean, the details the details are coming out right now, so this is all pretty rough and rugged. You know, it's been, it, it, it happened overnight, but the details are still coming in. So anything you want to yeah. add, Joe? Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up in Florida. I spent uh, the first 23 years of my life in Florida, South Florida. I you know, spent a lot of time in Orlando as well. Um, you know, I and I can say this now that the statute of limitations has run out, but, uh, you know, when I, when I was 21, 22, and 23, um, you know, I would go to nightclubs with my wife, uh, and, uh, you know, my fiancé or girlfriend, and uh, I always carried them. And um, like I said, you know, the statute of limitations have run up on that now. It's been 20 years. So, I don't really have to worry about it. I can talk out loud about it, but, you know, this is, in my knowledge, Florida State laws not to change. You know, this, yet again, we have another mass shooting in a gun prison. Uh, Florida law is still the same, right? 51% of the income you cannot uh, carry uh, lawfully into the uh, establishment, right? Yeah, you know, and I think one of the things is that, you know, in, in a nightclub situation where people are partying, um, drinking, etc., you know, it's going to be kind of difficult for, for people to carry in there. Obviously, there's a lot of intoxicated people, and people have feelings about that. I don't I like the reason. You can't really carry a gun, or well, at least I can't carry a gun if I'm consuming alcohol. And I don't really condone anyone carrying a gun when, when you're actively consuming alcohol. Not a good idea. And, and you know, some, some people feel that way, and I understand that. I live, uh, I live in Indiana. And in Indiana, there are, uh, unless you're actually legally intoxicated, uh, there are no laws prohibiting uh, in the state of Indiana you carrying uh, while drinking as long as you're not intoxicated. And there are no laws prohibiting you from carrying into a bar or nightclub uh, either up here. And we don't, uh, you know, so Indiana, for example, is one of many states like that. And we don't see, uh, you know, the anti-gun people would see, say, we don't see any blood in the streets up here. Uh, by people uh, carrying concealed firearms uh, in uh, bars and nightclubs. So that's, that, that, you know, it, it's just like in Indiana at 18, you can carry a handgun uh, with a license, but you can carry a handgun at 18 years old up here. And, of course, when I lived in Florida, um, I, I wasn't allowed to get a license to carry until I was 21. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and, and, of course, the reasoning was, well, people are too immature, but, you know, it works perfectly fine up here in Indiana any other states. Some other states at 18, you don't even need a license to carry it. Yeah, I think right now, right now, Mixed is showing a picture. 
that's broadcasting. This is a shooter right here, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, let's come back to that. Uh, so the, the shooter here, it's one person at this point. Think about that. One guy, his name is Omar Mateen. Um, you know, he is of Islamic uh, descent. And I, what I'm saying, anyway. Yeah, and I think one of the factors going on here, this is, I think, religion and sex, because this nightclub happened to be a gay nightclub. In Orlando, so what we're hearing is that he definitely targeted this nightclub uh, because you know it was a gay nightclub. So, you know, one of the things I have to say there is I, I recently did this um, thing in uh, Google Atlanta. Basically, it's something they have. Uh, I'm guessing they do it all over the country for YouTubers to get together and talk about things they can do to help grow their channel. And so there were other YouTube channels there and. When I went into this thing, I had like a, an AK-47 on one side of my head, and um, vote for guns on the other side of my head. And, and the security at Google Atlanta didn't like it, and you know there were some of the YouTube people like, "Oh, what's up with that? You're into guns." So when I was talking to the YouTubers that were there, I was like, "Okay, you know, everyone's talking about what they do. No one's gonna like what I do." And there happened to be two young black guys that were there that are in the uh, lesbian gay community and when I told them what I did they were like hey man that's cool because we all need to protect ourselves true you know that's what they were saying so I just want to mention that I'm sure there's gonna be some crazy people out there that are gonna say terrible things but I think we all need to we, that's true we all do need to protect ourselves including the lesbian gay community it's funny you bring this up because I, I was just cruising my Instagram account and I, I saw a picture of a woman with an AR-15 and um, it was just it just caught my eye because she you know she kind of looked like a man you know I'm not being disrespectful but it was a woman that kind of looked like a man so I clicked on it and uh, it turns out she was a former U.S. Marine Corps you know veteran and uh, who went to the Marine Corps as a man transition and become a female living a, a total productive life just a normal person so it was a female that was and she's still massively into guns but I, I just thought that was interesting that I saw that just yesterday and yeah. well, there's, there's quite a there's quite a few people like that you know I've got fans that are transgender and they're, yeah, they're genuine gun the genuine gun guys are girls no matter you know what it is and most of us and people think that in the gun community we don't welcome that and and you know you always have those those guys out there you know you always have that small percentage of people who are like that but for the most part in the gun community we welcome everyone it's you know yeah. do you support the second amendment do you support guns and our natural uh, born rights to protect ourselves so um, I just want to mention real quick we have John Jackson just Good joined us. Guys. Hey, hey John, John. Um, you, you know, thankfully we're okay at this point, but you know, there's there's a huge number of families out there that are not okay, and uh, you know, I figured I would do this live. It's it's really impromptu. It's really rough. You know, uh, anyone that wants to join, if you have a way to uh, PM me, PM me, and uh, I'll let you in so you can say what you have to say. But I figured I would do it because this is one of those events. It's happening at a really weird time. We've got politics going on, you know, we've got an election coming up, and, and uh, pretty much we've figured out who, who are going to be the candidates, and then you get this worst thing ever, and I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to jump on that to say, let's ban guns, let's do this, let's do that. They're going to use this as ammunition to ramp things up now, absolutely. Right, and there, as a matter of fact, that's already happening if, you, if you're watching the, the news feed on this. That's already happening. That they're saying, you know, there's just too many guns in America. We should take these things away. I, I honestly feel that it's the opposite. We all need to protect ourselves, and we are at war. You know, in America, we tend to want to feel safe and comfortable, like we we can just live the American dream every day, and we don't have to fight for that. And there's no cost for it, but there is. Uh, well, I think what the problem with us as gun guys is we're kind of preaching to the choir. You know, we all get together and say this is bullshit. But we're not reaching the target audiences, which is the anti-gun people or people on the fence. They're they're not really getting the message that we're all getting together and talking about. Yeah. Uh, did you want to say something, John? Since you just came in. Yeah, I I've only been awake for about an hour. Um, when I woke up, the wife said that it was it was fifty odd dead. And 
mass shooting, I'm thinking, what the hell? I thought it was overseas. Till I got on the computer, and, and that's just... Okay, John, I think it's are coming in a little break, broken up there. Um, I don't know if you guys are hearing John clearly. I can um, hear him. Okay. Um, um, yeah, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Like, in what li from what little I'm reading, it's... It, it's it, you can't understand how one person can do this. And the crap that I've just been reading is... That they're saying that he was angry because he saw two men kissing. So what? I don't think. I think that brings up a good. That brings up a good um, argument. Is this a mentally ill person or is this um, a religious crazy? I mean, they're both crazy, but is it yeah. because he's off his meds or is it because he's just a religious fanatic? Which one is it? I don't know, but what I'm reading is also he's gone through more than the normal background check. He's a security guard. Oh, he, really? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so he's gone through the background check for his firearms and background check for become a security guard. So they can't say that he never went through background checks. So all of the laws that Florida has, he's jumped through the hoops and he would have been issued a gun or he would have been able to purchase a gun no matter what because exactly. he was in the industry of owning a gun. He worked yeah. in that industry. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and, and, and to wait and see. Yeah, what, I, laws, I, what laws could they have written to have stopped this guy? There, there's none. There's, there are none. Yeah. Joe, did you want to say something? Uh, sure. Sorry, I just... such a thing here. Um... I'm not, I'm not even sure where to jump into uh, to, to where we were just headed there. Um, just you know, I, I think finally, and I've said this for a while. Eventually, we're going to have one of these one of these terrorists that show up that actually knows how to use a firearm, uh, and 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 the the, the carnage and the damage they're going to cause is going to be significantly higher than what we see. And I think I think that's what we see here. You know, this this guy obviously. Uh, knew something about firearms, uh, rather just, it does, doesn't appear that he was just randomly spraying into the crowd. It, it was here, yes, at this point he was actually uh, aiming and, you know, had a, had a little bit of skill behind him. Yeah, yeah the security you know, guard obviously has some shooting skills. Yeah, you know, the thing, we're, the thing that I think we're facing here is weapons, right? This goes back to Cain and Abel. It goes back to the beginning of mankind, and it's going to stay with us until we no longer exist on the planet. You know, the first tools we created were tools to defend ourselves and to attack things. So whether it's guns, knives, cars, bombs, uh, bows and arrows, whatever it is you want to imagine, you know, bats, rocks, there's, there's weapons that exist in the world, so there's just nothing you can do about that except be prepared and have some kind of plan for that time that you could defend yourself. So, like, this, this is a nightclub and obviously people are going in there and drinking so you've got limitations there but I think that we, we still have to have some people out there in every community that are willing to give up the drinking and all that to be able to defend the different pockets of the communities that we have so when you're talking churches yeah. or, or groups of black people, young people, uh, people who are gay, lesbian, transgender people of different politics, uh, religions, etc. We have to be able to defend what we what we hold dear. I was wondering, that was the first question that came up in my mind was, is, was there um, security security guards at this this club? You know, where, where was the security? Or were they just bouncers with, you know, no guns, obviously? Yeah, well, then... Also, the, also the, we have to find out was, was it a no, a no gun zone, too? Well, I think, I think that is why he picked that place because there was no one with allowed with firearms. Well, I think obviously being a club, a nightclub, there had to be some kind of security, and there was a police officer that was off duty that was either a security guard or there on the scene that fought back. But then this guy ran into the club, so they they had a running gun battle, and the guy ran into the club and then took hostages, from what we're hearing. Um, so, you know, that's the situation that we're facing. It's Florida. There's going to be someone around that's armed, but inside the club, not so much because they're going to search you. And the dynamic changes for law enforcement response, if it, if it goes from um, 
just a street shooting to a hostage situation, they're not going to go in guns blazing because it's not an active shooter, or at least the information they thought was that it's not an active shooter, it's a hostage situation. And they treat hostage situations differently. So right. I don't know if there was a communication problem. Maybe they, he called it out as um, a hostage situation when it was an actual active shooter situation. Who knows? We don't know at this time. Yeah, and you know, uh, uh, things are going to slow down. I think there was a huge, from what I'm seeing on the news, there was a huge police response. There was a police officer there. I think he was wounded. Um, and I think there was another police officer wounded going into the club. There was a huge police response, but they have to slow everything down. They have to take control of that situation. I mean, there's, you know, they can't just charge in there not knowing what's going on, how many people, who's going to be armed. So this is what I always say, you know, your protection comes down to you in the end, you. Now, for a lot, like, we're a little bit older here, and, and I think Joe was talking about this earlier, that, you know, the days of going to clubs and all that are gone. I don't like going anywhere that I can't go into armed. <laughs> I agree. But, you know, I mean, in that situation, if, you know, if you have some way of defending yourself, it's it's going to become paramount at this point, you know. It's kind of tough, though, when you have a guy who can push past security because, as you said, the security themselves may not be armed. So if this guy pushes past security and he is armed, it's really difficult now because he's the king of that room, you know. He's the one guy in that room that's armed. And that's what we have to start thinking about. We have to figure out how to defend our communities because, for the most part, when, when the police show up, you know, it's to, it's they're going to try to save you if you're still alive, and they're going to write, you know, they're going to do what, what the books say they do, and then they're going to write reports on that. You know, you know, one of the things that I always advocate is that your, your, your security starts up here. Situational awareness. Uh, not having a gun really isn't an excuse to not be able to defend yourself. You know, at, you know recognizing a threat before it happens is really the, the linchpin on survival. Uh, because even if you have a gun, uh, a lot of times, there, I mean, there's thousands of videos out there that show somebody who doesn't know how to draw their gun properly or the bad guy has, uh, I don't know, he, he, uh, he has a, a backup that, that shoots the cop when he draws his gun. I mean, it, it really is situational awareness first. Going into a place without a weapon, you should know the exits. You should know what you're going to hide behind, where your cover is, and all that kind of stuff. Has anybody yeah. um, found out what type of weapon he was using? Was I'm watching it live now to see what they're saying. Uh, okay. I think he was using it, what they said was an AR-style rifle and, and some kind of handgun. Okay. Uh, the, yeah. None of the postings I've seen uh, mention that. But just I was just wondering. Yeah. Um, they're not going to, you know, I, I don't think. I mean, at this point, we're talking about there's still bodies inside the nightclub. You know, yeah. the, the nightclub is, you know, um, so I'm hearing from some people that it was a gun-free zone and there was the whole gun-free zone sign and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't, you know, right now, like on, on our side, the pro-gun side of it, you know, the reason why I'm doing this is because we've got to try to deal with, with what's going on here. Because if you're looking at CNN or CBS or NBC or whatever, they've got their side of yeah. what's going on there, and they're not really going to talk about it the way that we're going to talk about it. So, You know, That's one of the things clear. that I'm worried about, I'm worried about copycats because, you know, we have these huge influx of Syrian refugees coming in now. I don't know about you guys in Florida, but we've already got messages that um, we're going to be taking in about 3,000 Syrians here in Nevada, and just 1% of bad guys slipping through without being vetted. That's 30 that's 30 terrorists slipping in. And, you know, they're watching the news and they see that, you know, nightclubs or big events like this are, are fish in a barrel, just like in France. Now you have this. And they're going to say, hey, this is something that we can really succeed in. Let's copy it and let's do it now while everybody's not prepared. I, 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 think, I think that's a, that's a very uh, good point to make. Just, uh, just it was last week. I was reading a story, and I don't remember where it was at. If you guys probably heard of it, but uh, there was a this strange woman, uh, uh, Muslim refugee woman, who, according to witnesses in the police report, 
came out of a neighboring wood and charged at a woman and her daughter who were in front of their house, grabbed their American flag off the flagpole, uh, with part of the flagpole intact, and started attacking and beating the woman and her daughter in the garage. And the neighbors had to come over and pull her off of them. The police showed up. Wow. Did you guys hear about well, that? I didn't no. hear about that one. No. Okay, we've got yeah, a few more people that joined. Let me just... Uh, We've got uh, Tim Harmson from Military Arms Channel, the bearded Mr. Harmson. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for. I mean, I know this is kind of crazy. It's Sunday. Bearded Mr. Harmson, I like that one. <laughs> hey Tim. Hey, what's up, man? You know, and then we also have Chris. Um, w welcome, Chris, to the another bearded guy. Man, you bearded guys, man. What's up with you, dudes? Yeah, you know, I'm just jealous. I wish I could. <laughs> You know, so this is like, um, I don't know if you've heard about this, Mac, what's going on here in uh, Florida right now. There, there's actually a state of emergency in Orlando, and they're trying to get a state of emergency declared for um, the entire state of Florida. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I woke up this morning and saw a, a blog post on Full 30 from... Matt, who's a sheriff out in Sacramento, he's on top of everything, and I don't think the man ever sleeps. And um, that's when it all kind of started, you know, I started looking around, getting on Fox News, seeing what was going on. And not surprisingly, they, they started off with uh, calling it domestic terrorism. I'm surprised they didn't use the term workplace violence. But, yeah. um, you know, pretty much they try to do everything they possibly can to make it look like uh, it's something internal and not external because... If we were being attacked by an outside force, it'd be crazy to disarm ourselves. But however, if it's lunatics within the United States just attacking each other, well, naturally, gun control makes sense. So it's going to be interesting to see how the uh, the anti-gunners jump on this, and they don't let any good tragedy go to waste. So it'll be you know hours before new legislation is proposed, even on a Sunday. I can see. Um, I don't know if you guys are watching the news as I am, but I can see already the governor has looks like some kind of Muslim delegate. So they may actually, for once, actually bring a Muslim, uh, Muslim to say something on the news and denounce this. I don't know. Um, I think I don't that know. I'm sure the, the Muslim in chief is going to have something to say here shortly. Obama's going to be all over the airwaves. Yeah, I think that that guy <laughs> that you're talking about, I saw him earlier. He was denouncing it. But the media, for, to to what Tim was saying, the media is. Tr they would rather have this be um, a sex attack, you know, because these because this was a gay nightclub. And they would rather spin it in that direction than oh, yeah. to, you know, than to say that this is, you know. But the truth of the matter here is whether people want to hear it or not. We're we're under attack. Our entire way of life in America is under attack. And an American way of life includes everyone, including, uh, you know, not including, you know, not exempting you because of your religion or sexual orientation, etc. I think this kind of exposes the. Uh, exposes how vulnerable we really are. I mean, we're extremely vulnerable, and people are taking advantage of that. You know, yeah. I've been surprised, and, and, you know, either the FBI has done one heck of a job, and the NSA, the CIA, and all those guys uh, have done one heck of a job up to this point protecting us from things like this, although we've seen it happen before, but it gets, you know, pushed under the rug is workplace violence, like the Fort Hood shooting, which was clearly an Islamic attack on the United States. Uh, San Bernardino, you know, it kind of just kindly silently gets swept under the rug. We don't want to call it what it is, this Islamic terrorism. Uh, it's happened, but not on a grand scale, not like what we've seen in Paris and things like that. And I've always wondered why, because, um, you know, we have refugees surging into this country. We have, it's, it, our, board, our borders are porous. It's incredibly easy to get uh, active cell members into the United States for them to plan such attacks. And, I mean, I can run down to my local hardware store and buy everything I need to make an explosive device. Um, you know, it's just, it's kind of surprising to me that it's, it's taken this long and it's only going to get worse. Once one happens, it inspires other lunatics to do the same. Now the media is going to spin it up. We're going to have 24-7 coverage of this for the next three months. They're going to talk about the, the shooter. They're going to talk about his family. They're going to talk about his, his upbringing. They're going to try to humanize this idiot. And um, all it's going to do is inspire more lunatics to get their 15 minutes of fame by doing something as bad or worse. Oh, yeah. I'm sure on the uh, terrorist websites, they're going to be promoting this as a huge win for you know their cause and to copycat it big time. Oh, yeah. Yep. 
Okay. Yes, and, quite honestly, it's, it's all too easy. I mean, any lunatic can jump in a car and go down a crowded street and run people over. Um, there's any number of ways that they can attack us, and they they will. And this is going to inspire them. And, and of course, you know, our, our government's knee-jerk reaction is going to be what it always is. Let's disarm ourselves. We're under attack. Quickly, take the guns away. You know what I mean? It's... Uh, it's well, mind-boggling, and the stupid people that follow along with it and 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 yeah. think that it's such a great idea is just unbelievable. But yeah, well, you know, it's going. We're going into an election year. We're, it's going to be interesting to see what the politicians do because politicians hate rocking the boat in election years. Yeah. Well, you know, so, Tim. I mean, they, they've been systematically attacking us <laughs> consistently. I mean, these guys don't let let up. You know, there's like all kinds of NFA laws that are changing. Um, you know the ATF is cracking down on across the kitchen gun sales and and, and um, you know guys that have a uh, a home uh, FFL license such as myself. I just recently got one. I guess I just snuck onto the wire. Um, yeah, they've been cracking down on that for decades, and and they're getting real serious about it. I saw something from the ATF recently that they're they're putting a stop to it. Um, yeah, they don't they don't they're doing everything they can to make it difficult. I mean. It, it's it's not just at that level. I mean, our own gun shop, BMO Harris Bank, has been doing business with with not just our gun shop, but the gun shop we're partnered with since the you know 80s, man, or whoever owned them before they were BMO Harris. But now all of a sudden we're a high risk business, and um, they don't want to do business with our gun shop anymore. And that's all due to, to the Obama administration. So they're attacking us from all angles. But um, and they're going to use tragedies like this. To, uh, to push their agenda forward, and sadly, the sheeple are gonna, you know, all rally behind them because all you gotta do is scare the crap out of people, and they're immediately willing to surrender every right they have for the promise of freedom, and not freedom. I'm sorry, for the promise of security, which, of course, they're not gonna get. So, yeah, I don't know what to say, man. I mean, I, I don't know if anyone else wants to jump in, but I think inherently people ultimately realize that they have to defend themselves. No matter what the news media says, I think a lot of people out there realize, even if they don't want to say it because of whatever their political beliefs are, we all you have to defend yourself in that moment. That's the best way that you're going to save your life. Anyone else want to jump in on that? Chris? You know, something that I, I'm noticing here mm -hmm. as, a, as a glaring question is, is I know the anti-gunners are going to say, uh, there was an officer on scene, and 50, 50 people still died. I mean, uh, I really want to know the details on how this, this shooting started and the series of events on how it went down, and 50 oh, people we're gonna still know. died. Because the 24-hour news cycle, we're going to know everything. We're going to know about where this idiot was born. We're going to know if he breastfed or if he, you know, <laughs> was fed from a bottle. We'll know everything about this ass clown shortly okay, yeah. because that's I'm, I'm more interested in about the next three months. Well, I, I, I just, I think it's very important that as representatives in the gun communities that we encourage folks that are going to be looking towards uh, to, to us uh, as how they can protect themselves, not as not just to say go buy a gun, but as, you know, get a concealed carry, go get trained, you know, because just having a concealed carry does not make you an expert. I think you hit the nail on the head right there. Just having a gun on scene did not solve this problem. Tactics. Something happened in the tactics that still allowed 50 people to die. And I think that's that's the nail yeah. on the head right well, there. One of the, things, one of the things I can tell you from something that I read that when this because this gunman got into to uh, from from what I'm reading, all of this is going to play itself out. But he got into a gunfight with an off-duty police officer outside the club. Then he ran into the club. Now there's a mother who said that her son got in touch with her, and he was in the club. He went into the bathroom, but then the guy came into the bathroom. So you know and. Who knows what happened there? I mean, that guy probably lost his life. So and it comes around to even if you're going into a club or something where they're going to search you, I personally believe you should always have some way to defend yourself because you can get in, backed into a corner like that. And I would rather f die fighting back than die begging for my life, uh, especially begging well, for, for someone mean, like this. That, that, that brings home another point that we've made time and time and time again. Why was this target chosen? Probably because it was a soft target full of people. I, I'll guarantee you there was probably a no weapons policy at this nightclub as there are most nightclubs. Why do you yeah. think terrorism takes place in such places? It's because it's a soft target. He can get um, a high body count, but he also did I mean, not like... If they would have put a sign outside, no Islamic terrorists, do you think it would have stopped what happened? You know? No. I mean, 
it's 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 this liberal mindset that all we have to do is appease them and disarm ourselves, and suddenly these nasty people that want to hurt us are going to go away. Never. I don't get it, man. Never. You, you know, know mm -hmm. it's kind of um, scary because I just went through a multi-jurisdictional um, training scenario with this in a five-story government build building with probably ten different agencies, and we just went through this exact scenario. And uh, it, it's kind of eerie to see this all playing out in real world when we just did this uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. You know what's the thing I think the media doesn't want us to do? They don't want us to say this. We have to get together and protect our communities. You know, we, we, we think that comes down if there's some kind of apocalypse or, like, you know, in Florida maybe there's some huge hurricane or something that goes through. But, no, every day you have to come together and protect your communities. That's just the bottom line. Uh, movie theaters are wide open. Even though people are allowed to be armed here in Florida, there's a lot of movie theaters that are starting to like go through your bags. If you have a bag, they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna go through your bag," you know. And then if if you're armed, if you know, they they want to politely ask you to leave. <laughs> well, how, yeah. how do you think that's gonna affect? Just I mean, the biggest target in Orlando, Disney World. How do you think that's gonna affect that? Well, they're already they're already doing that. They're one of the people that are spearheading it. They go through people's bags. Now, if, when I go there, I don't carry a bag and I'm armed. But they want to stop that because you know. Yeah, I heard. Law, yeah, Didn't someone I, show up to Orlando with a, a gun and they said you can't bring that gun in here. Yeah. I well, thought, I, thought, I thought they had metal detectors that they. Well, no. Here, here's the thing. Because because of the law here in Florida, yeah. uh, most places cannot stop you unless it's a bar that's drinking and things like that going on, right? What if it's private property, though? If it's private property, they can tell you to leave their private property, right? Yes, they can. If you if they find out that you have a gun, they can say that you're uh, trespassing, etc. But you know, this is the problem. All those things are going to become wide open to these kinds of uh, attacks. You know, I've been on those on on the grounds of those places armed legally. You know, I just didn't take a bag because my kids had a bag. They went through it, so I carry that thing on my body anyway because it's not going to do me much help in my bag if I get separated from my bag for some reason. But they want to crack down on that, and really, all they're doing is making us wide open for this kind of stuff to happen because of exactly what happened here. If you're armed, it's like from the Matrix, right? You remember in the the scene in the Matrix where Neo goes, where they go into the to the uh, building at the end. And they're all armed, so the metal detectors go off. But what can the security guards do? Because they're about to die. Yep. You know, going through the news, it's kind of crazy, guys. It's like apparently this clown was was under investigation by the FBI before all this, and wow. he's also made threats before all this. Wow. But it gets back to this this political bullshit that we have to deal with, where. Oh well, he's Islamic, so we have to be very careful, and we can't offend him, and we can't we can't do anything that you know treat him any differently than a 90 year old grandmother, you know, like at the airport. Well, I'll see, I'll, I go through airports all the time, and I'll see him, you know, taking some 90 year old lady off to the side and feeling her up, but then some guy with a turban walks straight through, you know. It, it's it's like we're so they don't want to get sued. They don't want to get sued. That we don't want to. Yeah, it's 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 like. If, if you've ever been to Israel and gone through the Tel Aviv airport, it's completely different. They don't care. If you look any re remotely suspect, you get pulled into a room and questioned. If you're traveling in pairs, they separate you and ask you questions. And if there's any conflict in your story as to where you've been, where you're going, what you're doing, guess what? You're not getting on the flight. Uh, but, well, in Israel, they actually have Palestinian license plates. So if you have a yellow or a green, you know, they, they actually differentiate your driver's license. But, but you know, we can't do that in America. We can't do that. We can't this. because we're so worried about offending a certain group of people, and and it's and it's ridiculous. Maybe that maybe things like this will wake people up. But unfortunately, the, the trend in America is is when something bad happens, we swing further to the left. It's like, yeah. oh no, somebody punched us in the nose. Quick, let's tie our arms behind our back. You know, it's just I, I don't understand the mindset, and it's and I, I can guarantee you. So let's 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 watch what happens if legislation gets proposed, which it will. Next thing we're going to see is a run on guns, run on magazines, run on ammunition, and you know it, it's the same thing all over again post Sandy Hook. It's do you guys just, think? Um, um, do you guys think that uh, when Trump finally chimes in on this, it's going to hurt him or help him? I mean, I, I, oh, I think he's going to appeal to his base. I, I think that's what oh, he's, sure, he's going to He's going to appeal to his base. I would assume. I would assume he'll double down on his let's remove gun free zones, which of course is one of the 
one of the few things that I agree with him on. And, uh, you know, it, it, maybe the whole good thing about this Trump uh, candidacy is that if he sticks to with what he's been saying, that he'll actually be able to keep the thought of keeping, letting people defend themselves wherever they're at uh, alive. And, you know, going back to the point someone mentioned about, well, there was already a guy with a gun there and it didn't help, uh, is what the media narrative is going to be. Well, it, it didn't help as much as it could have because the poor guy's, you know, sitting there in front of the club, probably on a night stool like most places in South Florida. He's sitting there literally with a target on his chest, which is his badge. So he was the first one to get shot, probably one of the first ones to get shot and neutralized. And then nobody was there to help him. Nobody was there to back him up. It was just him against this uh, nut job who would probably have gotten the drop on him because, you know, you're sitting out in front of a nightclub. You're not expecting, you know, to get lit up by some uh, Islamic nut job on any given Saturday night. Exactly. Well, if the uh, the usual cast of characters get in front of the cameras, which they will. We got we got a couple hours before they start. You know, they're rehearsing their speeches now. I assume they're going to start calling for gun control and all that good stuff. And what's going to happen? I, I can only imagine. I mean, this is going to rile people up. I mean, it's got us riled up. Obviously, I have other things I need to be doing right now. Uh, but here I sit on a, a video chat. I'm I'm pissed about it because I know what what it means. I know what's going to happen. I know we're going to swing far to the left again. But I think what's going what's going to potentially happen is that uh, here he comes people riled up and it will push people more p towards Trump it certainly isn't going to push people towards Hillary I think Trump if if uh, you know being himself he's gonna he's gonna come right out and he's gonna say Islamic terrorists and he, and, and Hillary is gonna say something uh, anything other than that because you'll never hear the word Islamic and terrorist come out of her mouth anymore than you will Obama's so uh, the fact that he'll 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 address it head-on will probably sway more people to his camp um, so, Not that I'm necessarily the biggest Trump supporter, but you know, you know I, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't think there's many of us in the gun community that are super Trump uh, supporters. But here's the problem that we're facing right now: we've got Trump, Hillary, and then Gary Johnson. And here in Florida recently, um, when Gary Johnson uh, won the nomination of the, uh, you know, the Libertarian Party to run for president, he was given a handgun by someone who ran against him. You know, a, a replica of a of a uh, old, I think, a flintlock pistol or something like that. He was given that as a token to say, "Hey, I'm going to support you." You know, uh, running as the independent candidate, and he took that and threw it in the garbage. That's what, what yeah, I heard. That you know, that's I, what I Gary came Johnson across that story too. Yeah, so uh, there's no way in hell I'm voting for Gary Johnson. I'm a you know I'm a libertarian myself because of the crazy way that laws are structured here in Florida. I'm actually registered as a Democrat because if you if you uh, register as an independent, you can in the primaries you can only vote for the party you're registered for. So what happens to Lola who did that is that she goes in and they don't let her vote for anything. So I go in and I vote like for the other guy the, against the person I want, and then in the general election, I, you know. Um, uh, especially being a gun guy, I vote for people who are pro-gun. That's what I care about. Um, yeah, a lot of states do that. They do that here in Indiana. When you go in to, to vote in a primary, they uh, they they ask you. <laughs> they don't ask. Well, they ask you. You know, what what's your party affiliation? Then you have Democrat, Republican, and then uh, NP, no party. And if you select NP, guess what? The NP ballot's blank. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So you know, um, they're just trying to manipulate the vote. Yeah, exactly. So even though I vote mostly Republican because the Re Republicans are supposed to be That's because we have two choices. We have <laughs> we have we have crap and real crap. Yeah. I mean, we don't we don't we don't have a choice. Our founding fathers are rolling over in their graves. Yeah. Here here's what I here's what I want, Tim. And, and I've said this to you privately, so I know you're gonna smack me the next time I see you. We need guys like you to run for office. I know you're way too busy. But we, we Dude, do nobody seriously. would vote for me. I mean, I, I appreciate I would, that, I, I, but nobody I would, would, would vote for me. I would volunteer because on your campaign. I would shut down my YouTube channel and be all about you getting into office. I'm not. I'm the, not. The reason why I would never get elected president is because of what I'm about to say. Because this this will live forever. I would solve the Islamic terrorist threat within about 45 minutes. Because I was sat down behind the desk. I'd look around. And I'd say, Hey, what's this little red button right here? And they'd say, Well, sir, that's how you launch the nuclear weapons. I'd say, somebody get me a cup of coffee, turn on CNN, <clears throat> and this is mine to push, right? And they make, yep, and I'm like, okay. And I'd push that button, and then I would start drafting my letter of resignation. <laughs> you see, that's why I support that. I think we have to, every now and uh, then... I mean, I'm saying look, that tongue-in-cheek. I mean, I'm not for genocide, but holy cow, people. You know, what people don't realize is this whole 
fighting with Islamic radicals isn't new to us. The millennials have no idea what's going on. Clear back to, to the halls of Montezuma and the shores of Tripoli. You, you know what we were doing back then? The Barbary pirates, you know what they were? They were a bunch of damn Muslims that were, tr that were interfering with our shipping and trying to, to, to sink our ships and jack with our trade. We've been at war with, with radical Islam since the very beginning of our nation. This is nothing new. These people have been jacking with us for 200 plus years. Yeah. Tim, Tim, that, that, that's history and that's the truth. You can't be talking about that. We'll I know. Shut down our hangout. Well, look, it's like we recently we recently had the um, you know we recently had this whole thing with um, hold on is that someone trying to call me somewhere? Okay, I don't know who. Okay, so we recently had this thing with uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? Where we bombed it, and then I guess Obama went over and did everything short of apologizing for yeah, well, us bombing see, you know, that. I love the Japanese. The Japanese people are wonderful. But this is another reason I'd never be president because every year on the anniversary of Pearl Harbor, I'd fire up the Enola Gay and I'd fly over and drop a Toyota car on them. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Ford F one be back in about half an hour. Yeah, that's what. That's what I'm trying to say to you. If we did not do that, if we did not do that, you would not be seeing my face right now on this thing. You know, between the Japanese and the Nazis, they were pretty much planning on taking out people like me, and the the whole face of the world would look completely different. So um, I know, you know. And, and you know, we have short memories, and we need to stop that. I'm not saying that we need to hate everybody forever, and and I have no problem with Germany anymore, and I have no problem with Japan. Um, but, you know, I am not going to apologize for um, dropping nuclear weapons on Japan, nor do I support it. You know, I remember years ago I went to D.C. and they were actually building a, um, uh, a, 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 a Nanola Gay exhibit, and then it got nixed because a bunch of namby-pamby, you know, apologists said, oh, we can't do that, it would be offensive to Japan to celebrate the dropping of the nuclear bomb. We ended the Second World War that those people started against us. Why wouldn't we celebrate it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just we erase our own history. We um, have short memories, and it's it's just and it just keeps coming back to bite. It's just like what I was saying about the whole Barbary pirates thing and and being at war with this radical Islam from the very beginning. We just keep forgetting our own history, and we pretend like all this stuff is new, and we'll never make forward progress while we're doing that. And I have no desire to run for political office. Good God, I'd rather suck start a Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's why we've got that's why we've got someone like Trump running, and you know, it it seems to me like it's boiling down to he's the only one willing to get out there and say that he's pro gun. I think we we need to put some checks and balances in place, and you know, hold his feet to the fire that he's actually going to do that if he becomes well, president. Now, now, now that, he's the you know. alternative to Hillary. I was vehemently against Trump. I know that Trump is nothing more than a a, a New York liberal limousine liberal. Um, you know, his, his, his recent conversion to con, you know, conservatism uh, is just that recent. Go back a couple years in his tri Twitter feed, you'll see that he's just as far left a lunatic as Hillary Clinton ever was. I've but always thought that. It, it, it's, it's, you know, he's telling us what we want to hear, and that's fine. Um, you know, he's pandering to, to people's fears right now, and it's a dangerous thing, I agree. I mean, this is how, you know, tyrants come to power. But people are pissed and people are, you know, and when things like that happen today happen, uh, it pushes people further and further to the right and to the radicalism. And yeah. again, I want to stress that me, you know, just nuking everybody was a, a joke, but there are people that really do think that way. And Trump is kind of appealing to that crowd. Um, you know, he doesn't, I don't even think Trump believes 90% of what he says, but yeah. he... Um, well don't you think yeah. that the Republican Party, I mean, I think Trump is pretty much the death knell, or should be, for the Republican Party as it stands. I mean, I don't think the Republican Party gets us as gun guys. They, they're they not willing to get out there and say the things he's willing to say. I mean, when do you see it? I don't. No. Well, and I don't necessarily agree with the way he says it either. I mean, I, I'm kind of glad he's starting to use teleprompters because when the guy just kind of talks off the top of his head, he comes off as a complete lunatic and an idiot. Um, with the teleprompter, he's actually somewhat convincing. I mean, his most recent speech is he's kind of calming me down. Before, Before. Um, I, I, I just I couldn't stand watching the guy. But yeah, I, I think what's happening there is that Trump is using, um, he's using the media that exists and he realizes, you know, like how they were showing how he called in to drop the dime on himself to the tabloids and everything to talk about all his mistresses. 
etc. He knows how to use it. And the thing that's going on there is that Republicans don't know how to use. They don't know how to use all this stuff that that exists out there today. They don't know how to use social media. They don't appeal to us. I don't think they even agree with us to begin with. No. It's always weird how everybody always makes a radical shift to the left. You know? It, it's it's weird. And, and, and people call, you know, they say that, that fascism, that the Nazis were hard right radicals. No, they weren't. They were national socialists. You know? Yeah. It's it, it it's just so weird how history gets rewritten and 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 but everybody always makes a, a hard swing to the left, and then you know it's just like the liberals we have here. Oh, we're all inclusive as long as you agree with us. <laughs> then if you don't agree with us, you never seen or heard such hate and vitriol as as what will come from their mouths. Um, you know we've seen that play out time and time again. I eh, I don't know, dude. I'm just thoroughly disgusted with everything at this point. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about some murderous ass clown in Florida that decided to uh, carry out his little act of terror. Did that guy die or is he in the hospital? I thought already he's in the hospital. He's dead. He's dead? Did he kill himself or somebody else get him? They killed him. There's some cops, dude. Well, yeah. I hope his 72 virgins are male. <laughs> yeah, look, you, as you can see here, they already have Michael Morell, C former CAA deputy director, chiming in. And that's the thing that bugs me about when these things happen is all these idiots that come on and say, oh, it was a false flag. It never happened. All those are all actors. Those are all you know, actors. That, I can't stand that. that. Not more than anything. You know what I mean? It's like no, the, the towers had just fallen and people had already started getting online talking about false flag and how it was an inside job and all this other stuff and that they weren't planes that hit those buildings. It was missiles. And, and uh, you know, it's like, Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, let me let me tell you, let me tell you something about that. Um, you know, I lived in Nigeria and I lived in the part of Nigeria that's Muslim, so I have some understanding of Muslim people from coming from outside of the country and having to live there and all that kind of stuff. When the when the planes fell, I just dropped off my kids at the babysitter. My boys were little babies at the time, and the babysitter happened to be um, they happened to be a, a black American Muslim family. And Lola and I turned around and because we heard all this stuff going down, and we turned around and went and got the kids. And they were mad at me because they're like, "Oh, are you doing this because, you know, because we're Muslim?" And I said, "No, I'm doing this because the country just went to war, and I'm gonna have my kids with me at home while this is all going on." And and I remember those 9/11 days. I was living in New Jersey. My entire family was in New York. I went into New I was in New York a few days before that. I went into New York a few days after that. And everyone, we were all like one nation, we were together, we were fighting, you know, people were volunteering to go out there and do something about it. But today we've forgotten that we are still at war and we will continue to be at war. It's like what you were talking about, Tim, with Israel. Israel gets it. They do. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've got, you know, we've got my friend The good Walter. thing with Israel, though, is they don't have the uh, Constitution to hold them back from what they got to do. I mean, it sucks to say that, but, you know I mean? That, that they, they can do a lot of stuff because they don't have the Constitution. Well, I don't necessarily agree with, with giving government complete power to do whatever the hell they want. I, I'm glad we have a Constitution, and within the bounds no, of the Constitution, there's we a lot we can do. Um, and, and there's nothing in the Constitution that says you can't stop some guy coming in from Syria on an airplane and strip search his ass. There's nothing in the Constitution that says you can't do that. And and this notion that Obama has extended or has put forth that the, the Constitution extends to enemy combatants and people on the battlefield in far off places is nonsense. They have no constitutional rights. Right. You know what I mean? We can do whatever the hell we want to an enemy combatant. You shoot one of our soldiers, I don't care if they string you up by your toes upside down. No. Nope. Yeah, it's yeah, I don't think we need the. I think we need the uh, constitution. So I don't want anyone to get that twisted. Oh no, I'm uh, not in. You know, I, I, but they yeah. have more freedom to do. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what we need. Direct things. We need. Here's what we need. We need courage. We need courage. We need to admit that we are under attack. That people are at war with us. That our way of life is threatened from all sides. Politically, it's threatened physically. We need to accept that. And then start to live a life like that's what it is. But sadly, the, go ahead. He, Hank said we're at war since since 9/11, but we never went into a war footing. Footing. We never I, I did it like you, you did in World War II, where you started treating it like a war. It was just uh, you know you send the guys off and you go back and you do your thing. 
know, that's not that's yeah. not. I mean, you know, so during the first and second world war, we had uniformed enemy combatants, and the belligerent nations were well known. We all had uniforms. Now we're just fighting people based on a philosophy. Um, you know, if if if, if I were president when, when this whole thing started with 9/11, never would have went into Iraq. We had absolutely no reason to go there. That was political payback. That was something else. That was just dirty politics. Afghanistan, we could have easily taken care of the problem with the uh, heavy use of air power and special operations, and we, we would have never had to occupy. Yeah. But you know, we did, but we let off. What's that? We did, but we quit. Or we backed off. Well, I just say, I mean, it's hard to say to bomb them back into the Stone Ages because they do live in the Stone Ages, but bomb them further back into the Stone Ages. And then any time satellites tell us that they're, they've got a new training camp, we, oh. we bomb the snot out of it. And then when we want to carry out political assassinations, which I'm just fine with when we're at war with a country, we send in special operations to do it. We take out their leadership. Um, you know, there's no reason to occupy. I think if history, I mean, we just don't, holy cow. I mean, I remember when we went into, when we went into Iraq. You know, I'm just some dumb hayseed from Indiana, and we have a bunch of MBAs running this country. And I remember saying, we're going to de depose a dictator, and we have no idea. We're going to create a vacuum. We have no idea what's going to replace him. It's probably going to be as bad or maybe even worse. And even I couldn't have predicted how bad ISIS was going to be. So, you know, it, it's when we go around doing this nation-building nonsense and thinking we can occupy countries and, and, and bring freedom to all these people at the barrel of a gun that don't want freedom – Something isn't freedom isn't given to you; it's fought for. Um, you know, all we're doing is just creating more and more enemies the world over, and we're spreading ourselves thin financially. We're about bankrupt. We got our military in every major. I mean, pretty much 80 percent of the countries in the world have a U.S. military base there, and you know, it's just we we got to stop the nonsense. We we can easily fight these these conflicts without having. I don't even know how we got off on this tangent, or I did. Without uh, you know. No, I think it, I think like I think Afghanistan. it's I think it's valid. I think one of the things that happened, I mean, to bring back what happened last night is that we're living in America and we're partying. Our young people are out there partying. From what I see in the news, it was a lot of guys, but there were women there, you know, people of color, uh, people, you know, all kinds of people were there at this nightclub and we're partying it was and a having gay a gay nightclub. That's what Fox News was reporting. Yes, it, it was a gay nightclub, you know, and 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 people are partying and having a good time and I was telling people I was I was telling guys earlier Tim, that you know uh, I I met some I met a, a, a several gay guys when I was doing something in Atlanta at Google Atlanta and I told them what I did and they said yeah you know we need we need guns too everyone needs to defend themselves okay no, no matter where you're coming from mm -hmm. and and I think that's what happened there you know we're 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 living in America and we think it's just life as usual you know the American dream everyone could just go out there and party and have a good old time. And what's happening in the world is never going to come back to our doorsteps. Hell yes. <laughs> so for what I Here, here's what's. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Before Hank was so. How can a how can a gay guy be a Democrat? How can a, how can a Jew be a Democrat? When you know, it's mind-boggling. How can they do that? I mean, it's insane. Um, I know you, you you see Chucky Schumer and all these guys get up there and and, and preach for gun control, and their relatives. I mean, w one generation ago. They were being exterminated and singled out to be exterminated, and yet here they are saying we need to disarm ourselves. Who in their right mind would think that way? If anybody needs a gun, it's it's a Jew. If anybody needs a gun, it's a gay guy or a gay girl. It's, I mean, that. these are it people that makes, are constantly it makes you targeted. wonder. It makes you wonder though what these guys' uh, mindsets going to be after the fact. Are they going to be? Pro self defense. I need a gun, or are they going to be like, "Oh my God, this is horrible. I saw my friends killed, and I, I want to go ahead and support gun bans." You know, it makes you wonder where they're going to go with this. No, well, be, well, be right. when we find out, I guess it's a lot of it's going to depend on on how this guy got his firearms, right? He was a security guard. He he was a security guard. Yeah, he he had, actually he was he background check. So I'm sorry. What was that? He, he was a security guard. And he, he got him through uh, what? Just normal means, background check, four four seven three four. Someone said earlier. Yeah, he, he legally bought them. Um, he was, he went through all the background checks and everything like that. Oh, my gosh. So he did a yeah. background check, and it didn't stop it. Oh, dear. Yeah. Here's, uh -oh. here's, the, here's the thing. I mean, and, and this is a big thing in the black community, right? A lot of black people are... Wait a minute, you're black? <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> shocking newsflash. I but thought you had a skin condition. I'm sorry. Just a really good tag. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that in the black community, a lot of us realize that we need to defend ourselves. We get it. 
However, when we go to vote, we, we vote contrary to that belief, you know? It, that's the problem right there. We know we need to defend ourselves, but we go to vote and we vote Democratic, and we don't think that they're trying to take away that ability for us to defend ourselves. And that's why I do what I, that's why I have a, a YouTube channel. Well, why, why does the black community do that? Is it because they inherently think that Republicans are kind of racist? Is that what they yeah, think? Yeah, that's what they've been told. That's what they've been taught. Yeah. They, again, uh, we ignore history. Which political party was in power when slavery ended in the United States? Republicans. The Republicans. Yeah. I mean, well, it, it, when, there's, when, there's when a, the civil rights movement was going on, who was pushing for equal rights for for African Americans? It was the Republican Party. It was it was it was the Democrats in the South that did everything they could to stop it. But somehow, between the '60s and 2016, we've seen the entire African American population in the United States. Go for the Democratic Party, and, and yeah. how or why? You've I also don't know. seen you've also seen a lot of gun laws put in uh, put into effect in America to to slow down black people from having guns and and etc. Legally, you know. Oh yeah, it was it was it, it was a lot of Democratic efforts. I mean, the whole the the, the whole poll tax stuff, and 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 you know, trying to di disenfranchise uh, certain groups of people, and and it wasn't just African Americans, man. The Irish were targeted, the Italian Americans were targeted. I mean, um, yeah. But yeah. and, and it's crazy. It was it wasn't the Democrats that were fighting for equal rights throughout American history. It was the Republicans. Not that I'm a Republican. I'm an independent. I'm a libertarian like you, because I think both parties are corrupt currently. Yeah. But you know um, what it is? It's a mass bamboozling of people. That's what I find. You know, it's like when you look at Roots, right? Uh, you know, to, to just keep the black thing going for a second here. You know, when you look at roots, a lot of black people think that that's the majority of how slavery happened, that these a few white guys came over to Africa and just kidnapped millions of black people, and that's not what happened. They were sold you know, by their own people. Yeah. yeah, basically that's what happened. You know, Africans sold their own people into slavery. That's well, how that happened. It wasn't down. just America. Right. America wasn't the only country doing Easy it. money for them. Yeah. And, 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 doing it too. And sadly, it continues to this very day. Yes. Yes, and that's and, exactly that's what's happening with our leaders. You know, the, the 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 black political leaders that people turn to, they don't realize that they're bamboozling them. They want guns to protect themselves. They want to have bodyguards and cops and security protecting them. But they but they do things that take away that right from the average person to do it because they're going along with the agenda of the party. Party and. Yeah, you know, and I think that's what we're facing. And, and when, with young people and all different groups of people who are supporting Democrats and liberals and progressives, I think they're bamboozled and they don't realize that if we lose this way of protecting ourselves, we lose everything because whoever comes into power can tell us who we are, how we live, and what we should be. You know, for the yeah. guys that went to the NRA convention, wasn't there some kind of talk about um, a 50-state uh, recognized? Or accepted uh, CCW, something like that. Didn't that come up? You know what's kind of crazy, and you know Joe from 13th C dropped off because he's he's opposed to that. At least last time we spoke about it. Um, you know, there's this there there has been a push um, for not a national concealed carry permit, which a lot of people are opposed to, but forcing reciprocity between the states. Right. Um, that's something I'm for, but there are a lot of a lot of people uh, that are against it. They don't want the federal Why? government telling us what we can or can't do, but I think a step forward would, would be forcing reciprocity, and, and the reason I say that is, you know, we forced it elsewhere. Right now, the federal government forces states to recognize and honor other states' states' licenses and permits, everything except firearms permits. So, you know, as an Indiana licensed driver, if they didn't, if the feds didn't force reciprocity, the minute I crossed the border into Illinois, I would become, you know, a criminal because I don't have an Illinois driver's license. I can't operate on Illinois roads, but the federal government has forced reciprocity, and I think they need to do the same thing. Um, I don't want a federal concealed carry permit, oh. but I, what I want to see is constitutional carry. More and more states are doing it. We've proposed it here in our own state. Um, more and more states are passing it. We pass constitutional carry in more and more states, and then we force reciprocity. And all what that means is, is if I'm legal to carry in Indiana that doesn't, doesn't issue a permit, I should be able to carry anywhere without a permit. Is Arizona the only constitutional carry, or is there another one? No, nah, there's others. I think Kansas passed it. There's there's four or five states that have done it. Oh, four more or states five? Are working okay. on it. Um, uh, Virginia, not Virginia, Vermont. Is it Vermont guys? One one of them is, has been uh, li unlicensed to carry since day one. Oh wow, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah hold on a second. Someone, someone else is calling. Phil's trying to get in. Tell oh. him I sent him an invite. 
Uh, yeah, I think Joe's trying to get back in. Yeah, you know, I think w one of the reasons why um, people are worried about it is because, you know, they're worried about losing the right to open carry and all that kind of stuff. But we have to do something, and, you know, I don't know if we have to, like, gun guys have to do something because I don't think Democrats are on our side. I don't think Republicans are on our side. We have to come up with a way to fight this. Otherwise, we're going to turn around and find that we really have to fight because there's no one else out there genuinely fighting for us. You know, do we form a council? Do we find out who are the real gun guys that are willing to run for political we're office? Supposed to be. We're supposed to. We're supposed to have the NRA. And um, the NRA doesn't do its job most of the time. The NRA itself is a five-story building, and they have roughly 500 employees. Of that five-story building and 500 employees, about 85% of them or 90% of them do nothing but collect dues, money, um, make cool little ads and television spots. Um, you know, they're the education branch. They don't do jack legislatively, and they, they couldn't be bothered. Then there's the ILA, which has a corner office in one floor that is, is, are, are the guys that are on our side. And they're the ones that are fighting the fight that believe that what we believe in. They're the hardcore gun nuts. They're the actual shooters and the people that, you know, support our rights to, to carry concealed and have pushed to get concealed carry in our, all 50 states. The NRA I have a, a real hard time with. I, I, I am not, I'm, I'm at odds with the NRA about half the time. The ILA I get along with much better. And I wish the ILA was in charge and the NRA was in the corner office, but yeah. So how, way, do we, but we, how do we change that? How do we turn that around? Well, you know, if you pay your dues to the IR, uh, to the, to, I was going to say the IRS, we all pay our dues to the IRS. If you pay your dues to the NRA, <laughs> you have a voice. Um, and we can force change at NRA, but we also have other options. You know, we have GOA, we have... Um, uh, SAF, we have all sorts of other gun rights organizations, but the only one that really has any clout and any power is NRA. But keep in mind, people think that NRA is just this massive organization that has unlimited funds, and they don't, man. They have, you know, on average about $30 million a year to spend on um, legislative action across 50 states, and then you have assholes like Bloomberg who spent $11 million just trying to get one anti-gun bill passed in the, in the state of Washington. And it failed, didn't it? Yeah, it failed. Yeah. NRA beat them. But, here, but the point is is that NRA doesn't have unlimited funds, and we're up against people like George Soros and, and, and Michael Bloomberg who are willing to throw their fortunes at disarming us. And it's crazy because we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars, if not a billion dollars, buying guns and ammo and getting training, I think, things that we should do, yes, but we, sh we should well, need to spend Michael some money. Bloomberg, yeah. that's just 10 of us. <laughs> There's ten of us buying, you know, three hundred million guns a year. <laughs> it's, it's the collectors. Americans really don't like guns. It's just, you know, it's just about ten people that hang out in Google Hangouts that like them. Right. Yeah. With unlimited yeah, I think, budgets. I think half of the Americans out there own guns, and whether they want to, you know, admit it or not, uh, want to be able to own guns and be able to defend themselves. They just don't put their money where their mouth is, and we have to figure out some way to do that better. Because we're going to lose this fight. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we're going to lose it. No. I think, actually, you know, what's kind of funny is, if you take a look at the last 10 years, we've actually made a lot of forward progress. Um, you know, when I was a kid growing up, there was a handful of states that concealed carry. Now we've got it passed in all 50. Now, granted, it's not equal in all 50. There, there are a few uh, may issue. Most of them are, are, are shall issue. But in my lifetime, I've watched us go from a handful of states with concealed carry laws to all 50 having them. Um, when I grew up in Kansas, we couldn't have suppressors or short-barreled rifles. They have all of the above, and I believe they just passed constitutional carry. We are making forward progress. So, you know, a lot of folks think that we're losing our rights. We're actually seeing more rights today um, with regards to firearms ownership than we saw even 20 years ago. But it's things like with what happened today that gives the anti-gunners the leverage they need, and they're going to move quickly. I Mark my words, they're going to go on television, and they're going to start making their speeches, and they're going to start writing their legislation. They'll do uh, after-hours legislations. They'll call emergency sessions of Congress to try to force something through like Obamacare because they know it's in their playbook. You have to capitalize on emotions. When emotions are high, people are going to be upset about the loss of life, and right now is the time for them to capitalize on those emotions and say, if you want to be safe, listen to us. Give us your guns. And they, and they probably have their laws already written. What's that? 
They probably had a lot of those laws pre-written just waiting for something like they this. They do. Well, they absolutely do. They're in a rock they have the speeches process. pre-written, and they have the laws pre-written, and they're just waiting. Nancy Pelosi has said as much. When the, uh, Most of the laws that were put forth right after Sandy Hook, those laws were pre-written, and they were just waiting for the right moment to introduce them. Well, and I guarantee you they're doing it right now. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Walter. Two of their most favorite terrorist groups are involved in this, the gay community and the Muslims. The two groups that they protect the most, it seems as as of late. So they gotta they gotta walk real carefully. I mean, you know, I, that's just me looking at it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does make it does make sense. I was actually gonna be concerned about that. It's like now that we, you know, this was a, a gay club being attacked, and you know, I'm in North Carolina, so that whole bathroom incident's a big big thing right now. <laughs> I just wonder how this is really gonna affect how. I mean, are, are people really gonna care as much that it was a gay club versus school? Right? Even more. Even more. Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, if anything, you know, it, it may actually, you know, I've seen, I've seen just, you know, through the, owning a gun shop, I've seen more women people buying firearms, and I've seen more folks in the gay community buying firearms. Um, I think, if nothing else, we're going to see a surge of folks in the gay community buying firearms to defend themselves because they're going to feel like they're directly under attack right now, and they should be oh, buying absolutely. firearms. They should be getting training. And they should be defending themselves. Right. I hear um, what you're saying, though. Is you're saying that the general public may take this um, softly because it's the gay community and not mainstream America, is what you're saying, right? That's what I'm kind of thinking. Just because I mean, like, North, like look at that. You know, Target's got the, you know, a million, 1.3 million people signing a, a thing because they don't want you know, the wrong people using the wrong bathrooms, and that's just another issue where we, we kind of get off focus on what really matters. This is just another issue. Right, it's, it's a diversionary tactic. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just wondering, like, if you got 1.3 million people in a country of, um, again, 300 million, like, where does this really play out? Like, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm thinking the number 50 is going to be a big deal. I think the assault, the assault weapons, uh, you know, I'll say ban may be a big target, but I, I kind of feel like... I, you know, and this is, I hate to say this so soon after this, the people probably may not care as much uh, unless, you know, they might rise the millennials, I think, because they, you know, they're very big on the, um, you know, get the equal rights marriage thing. But I just think it's, I think there's just, it's kind of bring a few things to the forefront that hasn't. No, I, see, I see what you're saying, yeah. Especially probably the hardcore religious people, they're probably like, oh, you know, they're living in sin anyway, that kind of thing. Well, yeah, they, they might not care. It. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, Muslims were all living in well, sin. Well, so, yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. I definitely am. Yeah. Well, your, I was about ten minutes ago. Problem, right there. <laughs> Listen, you know, I think that uh, I I agree with you. I think there's good. There are going to be more um, people in the LGBT community that realize that they have to defend themselves. We also have to defend them. I'm, you know, I'm I'm for America. I'm for defending communities that aren't trying to. You know, there is an element, there is there are people in the community that are trying to change everyone else and trying to convert everyone else to what they believe. And I'm against those people, but I think everyone else, you know, has the right to live their lives and be who who they are. And you don't have that unless you defend it. It's just just the way it goes. It's too late when the cops get involved and you know, think about this. There's like if there are already at this point fifty people that are dead and close to fifty other people that are wounded. You're talking about a lot of people out there in America that these are their family members. You know, these are their brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, and they're wondering, like, how did this happen and how can we stop it? And we've been going like this in America for years and years and years, and, and the only thing we can do is start fighting back and, and have these people realize that we're not a soft target. You so, know what? You, I think you, you, you said something that really hits the nail on the head, fighting back. I used to teach um, active shooter response, and... Um, it, it hurts me and bothers me that there was only one shooter and a hundred people against him. And I used to teach that, you know, it, when it comes down to that fight where you, you run, hide, fight, you guys know about that? When it comes to fighting, even if you don't have a weapon, you pick up anything you have, your bare hands, you can overcome a shooter. So oh, easily. Yeah, if yeah, you're at a nightclub, that guy should have been tackled well, instantly. He should have been tackled. I mean, obviously these guys aren't trained to do that, but... There's always chairs around. Yeah, yeah, well, but you know, but you know, people aren't preparing for war. We're we're just in this state that a gunshot goes off and we get scared and we scatter and we start getting out of the way. You know, we're not we're not we don't want to accept 
the fact that we are at war. People don't want to accept that. We want to forget about it. We want to pretend it doesn't exist. And we could sing Kumbaya and be friends with everyone. And it's nonsense, you know. I mean, it, I guarantee it's crazy. you, he gave this back to at least thirty people. He had to have. inside a club like that. He, there, at least twenty or thirty people had were behind him at some point, but they didn't attack him, and they could have. But the media, yeah. even in the media, even laws that people have, and now we, we, we're in Florida and we don't have that, but Orlando, um, Orlando is kind of like a huge mixing, uh, melting pot for Florida. You have a lot of tourists over there, and, you know, most of the people in Orlando, I hate to say this, are liberal people. Right. So, you know, there's not this state of mind where you're prepared. You have to be prepared for that, you know, because you're going to have fight or flight when something goes wrong. And if you don't train, if you don't prepare, if you don't even think in your brain, that this could happen and the only way to stop this is to fight back. This is what happens with the media, all the things that we watch, movies, all that stuff, try to train us that, you know, we could, all, all we have to do is be nice to people and be friends with them and, and that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna deal with this and that we shouldn't fight back. But we're all under attack and we all have to figure out, we all have to give importance to fighting back. You know, I don't think everyone has to go out there and have as many guns as I have or you guys have. But we all have to realize that we're at war. You know, we're sending our children out into this world. You know, my, my kids, my boys are 16 and 17, and they're driving. <laughs> you know, so they're out there doing things on their own, and I'm constantly telling them that, you know, you have to realize this. You have to think like this. Uh, yeah, but, but check this out. I mean, we, this, this liberal idiocy is, is, has permeated every aspect of American culture. Think of this. Our soldiers aren't allowed to be armed on U.S. military bases. So Our recruiters that's are not ridiculous. allowed to be armed at recruiting stations. And, and that's even after the Fort Hood shooting. So it, it's, it's, it seems like such a huge uphill battle. But, you know, the, the American culture, the, the, the great American culture of 100 years ago is gone. And it's been replaced with this liberal retardation that, you know, it, 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 how, how do you get past it? And, and the bad thing is, is these, these lunatics are very deliberate in their actions. They've taken over our school systems. So they're getting to our youth, and, they, and, and these schools have our children longer than we do most, in most cases, especially during the school year. I mean, I could tell you story after story with my kids in school, me, me getting spoken to by one of my children's teachers saying, well, you know, uh, Cole today made the gesture like this towards another kid when they were playing on the playground and, um, and, and, and we can't have that. And I said, what, he made this? I said, do you understand when I was a kid, my son's age, we played cowboys and Indians? Oh my gosh, how awful. I said, yeah. and, and my son has Nerf guns, my son, son shoots real rifles. I just posted a video of him on Instagram doing it. The kid's a good shot and he's seven years old. You know, I said, I own a gun store. I carry a gun every day. As a matter of fact, I'm carrying a gun right now. And, of course, my child is going to talk about guns. He's exposed yeah. to them. And I don't ever want to hear or get you know, lectured again about my son talking about firearms. But that is what we're dealing with right now. Yeah. But that's why we have to be like you because the people on the other side, the liberals, the progressives, they are unabashedly, unashamedly what they are. And we have to be the same way. We have to be unabashedly, unashamedly ashamedly, unequivocally pro-gun, gun guys. We have to, we have to, you know, not shy away from it and not hide from it and let people know that we're here, we exist, you know, we're not, you know, we're not going anywhere and we're not giving up. So, yeah. I think, Chris, well, you've, got to, you've got to get out of here, right, Chris? You want to yeah. say something real quick? Yeah, I just want to be, uh, thanks, guys. It was fun and uh, you guys just stay safe out there. All right, thanks, man. Same to you. Yeah, I got I to gotta roll, too, man. As I told you, I had things I got to get, get done today, but um, yeah. thanks for hosting it, Hank. Yeah, thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate that. See All right, you, take man. care, guys. See All you, right. man. Have a good one. Stay safe. Peace out, brother. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I think that, like I was just saying to Tim, I think we need to be unashamedly gun guys. Yeah, that's how we start to change that's, the, that's the, the whole conversation. That's obnoxious, you know. That's sometimes... Some some gun people are a little too much, you know. So I guess you can be over the over the top sometimes if you're not careful. So. Yeah, I, it can be a double-edged sword in my opinion. And in in my job, what I do, I can see how it's it does help us and it hurts us at the same time. Because I was just at Walmart the other day, 
granted, you know, I live here in Vegas where you can have a CCW permit no problem, and you got a guy walking around with a drop leg holster when, and I'm all for that. That's cool because I'm a gun guy. I think it's cool, but man, does that really make us look like a a, a <laughs> bunch of crazy guys as well? On the flip side, because this guy's walking around Walmart with a drop leg holster in black cargo pants. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. Really? There's, there, yeah. I think the walk softly, carry a big stick is a better way to go. I agree. I agree. You gotta you gotta be smart about it. Yeah, John. What do you think about that? How, how do you see it? Is it you know? Because you, well, you you not let you talk here. Like um, I've only been in the states for about nine years, and in those nine years, I've been a gun owner for about six of them. And it was a major culture shock when I came from Australia to the states, where you could just go into a gun shop and buy a firearm. But I started out open carrying because I couldn't get a CCW, but now I can, and I now carry concealed. Yeah. Um, near enough everywhere I'm legally allowed. My wife is great with it. She doesn't like to carry, but I just look at it where you near enough got to have your head on a swivel to keep, you know, to see what's going around you. And in New Mexico. Thankfully, we haven't had this problem of mass shootings, but I've just noticed on my um, Facebook feed where we had five shot in New Mexico today, and they don't know they don't know who shot them. It was a family, so it's happening all over. It's, it's just, all over. It's absolutely. People just can't say that it's not going to happen. It is going to happen. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, this is not the only incident that happened in Orlando in the last few days. There was another in this, uh, incident where a young woman that is a popular singer, I think she was on The Voice, and then she has a big YouTube channel. That's right. I heard he about was, that. He was assassinated by you know some crazy guy out there. The guy and, walked up and shot her, right, when she yeah, was uh, like, at a concert? Yes, and then like you said, her brother jumped on the guy, and then the guy committed suicide, you know, um, the thing, the thing I want to go back to talking about, the guys who do open carry, the reason why those guys are doing that is that because... They don't have any other all, choice. Yeah, there's all these crazy laws going on. You know, what just happened in California, where California is saying we don't have the, you know, people in California don't have the right to get concealed carry permits. But they also, don't, you know, they don't want to give them the right to open carry. I mean, that's why those guys are doing it. So, I, you know, well, I think that... Not here in you know, Vegas, though. The guy in here in Vegas wanted the attention, I think. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you have that. You have all sorts. Doing this thing, you have all sorts. And I agree with you. I think we all need to be balanced people, and we need to think about other people while we're out there doing what we're doing. But we cannot we cannot be so timid that we let other people override us because the oh, people absolutely. on the other side, those guys on the other side are talking really, really loudly, and we have to make sure that we're also out there talking. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, um, so true. When you know, when Tim was talking about schools, and I hate to be so negative, but um, in my line of profession, I can tell you that that's a big thing on our radar right now is we're, we're fearing uh, a multiple shooter Muslim terrorist attack on our school system. Which that's, where would, we're the, that's where we're the most open. Our country. I guarantee you it would definitely cripple our country. That's where we're the most open and we're the most vulnerable. And, um, you know... I'm sorry, I'm, it's it unfortunately it's coming because we won't change our mindset. Unfortunately, they'll they'll turn the schools into airports, and that's not the answer. Exactly. You can't you can't you're blaming everybody for a few people's actions. You have to you have to you have to go up to those few people. Bottom line, yeah. you got to be yeah, that. Yeah. You got to be yeah. like the trailers. You got you got to be proactive. Yeah, the Absolutely. educational system. Absolutely. The educational system's already messed up. We definitely don't want to make it go go the route of the TSA because it's already bad enough. Like, but we like, do be like a labor camp. Yeah, but we do have to. You know, we do have to do something to protect our schools because those are the most. The, I don't have anything that's more valuable to me than my children. Nothing. Period. Oh, absolutely. Same here. So you know what? Here's what I want to do. I'm going to give everyone a chance to wrap up here, have some final words. I think we've probably been doing this for a little over an hour. You know, and I want to I, I want to thank all the people out there that are watching and sharing this and everything. You know, we I, I felt it was important for at least some of us in the gun community to get out there ahead of uh, the wave that's coming at us. So I'm going to start with uh, Walter Keller from uh, Safety Harbor Firearms. I'll let you say what you have to say, Walter. I kind of jumped in late because I didn't even know this happened until you text me. 
I was out in the yard doing yard work this morning. So and you're a Florida guy. <laughs> I was sweating my bejesus off out trimming the hedges, and I didn't even know what happened until you text me. So it was all news. I got on. I go, oh my god, god, you know, not again, or not something like this again. So, um, you know, it, it, it's just bad. You know, I there's I don't know how you fix it really. I mean, besides educating people and and actually going after people, they have ideas that might be doing stuff like this. So and they. There's some hints of something that he had connected to something else, and you know these intelligence types don't say a whole lot because they're embarrassed if they lost it, they missed it. But you know, you got to be proactive. Yeah. Thanks, Walter. Thanks. Oh, thank you on the fire. That's me. Yay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, mix flip. What, what do you want to say, my friend? Um, I think that in the grand scheme of things, we're not going to be able to solve this problem tomorrow, obviously, or even in the next probably few years. I, I like to look at things right here, right now, Johnny, on the spot, how I can solve a problem like this. And like you said, the answer is um, mentally prepare yourself for the fight. I mean, you don't pick the day. You don't pick the hour. you got to be prepared because it doesn't matter what the laws are that's going on around the world. It doesn't matter. Nothing else matters other than what you can do right when it happens. And, and I think it starts right here being um, situation aware and, and carrying your gun when, absolutely, when, when you can, when you can, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Amen to that. John, do you, you know? Just want to thank you, Hank, for letting me on. Um, listening to all you guys is really um, educational for someone like me. But it really all I can say is you just need to keep aware of what's around you and just if you hear anything, anything strange, don't be afraid to report it. Yeah, you know, like it may be nothing, but you know, you never know. You may stop something. Absolutely. Okay, and and you know here here's what I want to say. I mean, you know, it breaks my heart to hear something like this. Um, I I don't care what community it is that gets attacked. You know, I believe in in freedom and peace. Uh, people get on me all the time for saying peace out at the end of my videos. I genuinely do believe in peace. I want to live in peace. But you know, that's why I say Sivas Passim Parabellum. That's what's on my patch. It's you know what it stands for is if you seek peace, prepare for war. And I'm trying to tell people that in America we are the last bastion of freedom in in the world. Okay, we're we're it. And when they when they take us out, and when we finally give up, it's over. And that's what's happening here. We are we are um, going to keep getting attacked like this. Unfortunately, it's going to be sad. It's going to break our hearts, uh, and it's gonna we're going to feel it personally. And you know, what I think is we have to realize that if we really truly want peace, we have to defend that. Everything has to be defended. You don't have something you cannot defend. And peace and security and comfort also has to be defended. Okay, so I'm Hank Strange. I want to thank everyone for watching this. Uh, you know, we've got hundreds of people watching this right now. I want to thank all those guys out there. Make your comments. Please share this out to the folks out there and to the people who are personally affected by this. You know, my heart goes out to you. It really does break my heart. Okay. I'm Hank Strange. Peace out. See you later.